What's up guys? The NBA has officially announced its new media rights deals. So I'm going to break it all down for you guys today, including TNT's matching rights and what might happen next. So let's start with the obvious. After months of speculation, the world's top basketball league has signed new agreements with Disney, Comcast is NBC Universal, and Amazon. These agreements are worth $77 billion over 11 years, or $7 billion annually, and they officially start with the 2025-2026 season. Now, to be clear, the WNBA is included in these numbers, so they're a little bit misleading, but if you take out $2.2 billion, that's roughly the total, so we'll call it around $75 billion for the NBA alone. But let's cut to the chase. Warner Brothers Discovery, or think TNT, couldn't come to an agreement with the NBA, so they decided to use their contractual right to match Amazon's $2 billion per year offer. However, after reviewing Warner Brothers' matching bid for less than 48 hours, the NBA said that Warner Brothers' proposal, quote, did not match the terms of Amazon Prime Video's offering, end quote, and that they would be going with Disney, NBC, and Amazon. TNT then responded with an afternoon press release, insinuating that they would take legal action against the NBA, and many fans are already calling the NBA and its owners greedy for ending a three-decade-long relationship with TNT and, of course, the award-winning studio show Inside the NBA for essentially what amounts to a little bit more money and global distribution with Amazon. Although, the truth is that Warner Brothers Discovery and TNT kind of did this to themselves. Not only did Warner Brothers CEO David Zaslov try to play hardball in negotiations by saying, quote, we don't need the NBA, end quote, but TNT had an exclusive negotiating window with the NBA baked into its last contract. The NBA's other partner, Disney, left that exclusive negotiating window with a framework for a new deal in place, while TNT didn't. In fact, it's being reported by Andrew Marchand that TNT was the one who suggested bringing Amazon into the exclusive negotiating window, with the idea being that a third broadcast partner and package could potentially shoulder some of the NBA's increased fee demands. However, things didn't go as planned. Zaslow reportedly topped out at a $2.1 billion annual bid for TNT's package of games. That's a sizable increase from the network's current $1.2 billion annual payment, but it's below what the NBA wanted at $2.3 billion a year. So Zaslow let the rights hit the open market, presumably thinking that no one would buy the NBA's B package for $2.3 billion annually. And if someone came out of left field to do what he thought was financially reckless, Warner Brothers could always match the agreement, keeping the NBA as a cornerstone within its media rights portfolio. But this is where things get spicy. NBC came in over the top with a $2.5 billion annual bid, something that Warner Brothers wasn't willing to and maybe couldn't pay. That's why Warner Brothers ended up trying to match Amazon's bid, not NBC's. It represented a smaller number of games than they currently have, but it also kept them in the game, and it was closer to the network's current annual fee of $1.2 billion, versus NBC, which was at $2.5 billion. This isn't the NBA's first rodeo, though. The main problem is that Warner Brothers' existing contract with the NBA was put in place before streaming was really a thing, and since the matching process requires the incumbent to go line by line, explicitly stating how they plan to match the agreement, Amazon's streaming offer was always seen as a risk. So the NBA spent several weeks working with lawyers to make its new agreements ironclad. One example of this is that Amazon reportedly put a poison pill in the contract, which would require Warner Brothers to pay three years of the contract or nearly five and a half billion dollars in cash up front. This was presumably implemented due to Warner Brothers' current debt load of $39 billion, meaning that they didn't think they could actually afford that up front in cash. So while Warner Brothers told everyone that they were matching the offer, it's unclear what that actually meant. If Max, their streaming service, didn't offer the same streaming distribution as Amazon Prime Video, and the payment terms had to be altered, the NBA could have always just argued that it wasn't a match after all. And this is exactly what they did. And it's potentially a big problem for TNT. Optimus will say that Zaslaw did the right thing because the NBA's B package isn't worth $2.5 billion annually, especially when you consider the company has $40 billion of debt on its balance sheet. But the reality is that not having the NBA rights could lead to much bigger problems. For example, the NBA accounts for more than 80% of TNT's annual advertising revenue today, and it's also fair to speculate how this might impact carriage fees. TNT is currently the second most expensive cable channel, costing every customer on cable $3 monthly whether they watch the channel or not. However, most of that value is tied to the NBA rights, and now that they don't have those rights, it doesn't take a capitalist to see why distributors might want to drop TNT's carriage fee down to $2 or maybe even $1.50. In the end, that is a much more significant liability for TNT than the advertising revenue. One also has to question whether this was NBC's plan all along, i.e., 
overpaying for an NBA package because the company is owned by Comcast, and they knew that they could potentially make up the difference by reducing TNT's monthly carriage fees. TNT will probably try to stop this by spending a good chunk of the money from its $2 billion NBA bid on other sports rights. In fact, they're already starting to do this, recently signing deals that included licensing of college football playoff games from ESPN, and a 10-year, $650 million deal for exclusive U.S. rights to the French Open. That won't be enough, though. The UFC is really the only premium sports property up for grabs over the next few years, but it's also an increasing desired asset among media executives, and the way that ESPN has been swallowing up live sports rights as it prepares for the eventual transition from cable to streaming. I highly doubt that Disney is going to let the UFC out of its exclusive negotiating window without a deal, essentially what they did with the NBA already. So the real question is, what happens next? Well, Warner Brothers and TNT will likely file a lawsuit against the NBA, arguing that they negotiated in bad faith and their matching rights should apply. These two organizations will pay the country's best lawyers more than $2,000 per billable hour to fight the case, with TNT spending millions for the right to spend billions. It will probably end in a settlement of some sort, which is best case scenario at this point. That would allow TNT to walk away, feeling like they got something out of the matching rights, even if they weren't applied how they expected. It would also enable the NBA to avoid signing a decade-long deal with a partner that just sued them. Commissioner Adam Silver then can focus on the league's new partner. And given no one knows what the media landscape will look like a decade from now, getting $77 billion in long-term cash locked in is objectively a great deal. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe to the channel. I make weekly videos breaking down the business and money behind sports.